All right. Hi, everyone. This is Shannon Port, and I welcome you to uh, this edition of the Art of the Feminine podcast. We're doing the Goddess Report tonight, and we are talking about the huge influences that are active at this Taurus full moon. And the Taurus full moon will be happening on October 31st. It's happening in just a few days. And um, it's a big one. We're going to talk about the influence that are, influences that are on the fact that it falls on Halloween. It's also Samhain, and it's also falling just three days before the election in the U.S. And there's a, there's a lot of energy coming to the surface at this time. Um, I'm I'm what I'm really seeing is that the elemental forces are almost. It, it's climactic. It's the climax of elemental force. And so we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, so I'm thinking that I would like to meet on Mondays going forward to do the astrological planetary updates through the goddess report on YouTube. But I would like to also invite you, I'm planning to do, and I may have mentioned this before, and I, I'm planning to start this week. In fact, I'll be starting on Halloween and on the Taurus full moon to do meet on Instagram and do a Friday live. So I'm going to be doing like a divine feminine, divine feminine Friday live. And I want to call it a divine feminine energy update. So what we'll do is we'll talk about the planetary forces through the astrological lens at the beginning of the week and then going into the weekend. And I talked to a couple of my friends about this. We'll kick off the weekend with a really um, special, just a checking in what energies are active and how we can best tune in and navigate through these times because they really, really are something that we've never quite experienced before. And so we're just going to take a moment and then we're going to dive into the Taurus full moon. All right. I have the, the influences that are active right here. And then I'll probably do a little bit of reading and we're going to talk about the archetype. What's really special is that we're going to talk about the archetypes of Taurus and Scorpio. So we are moving from the Taurus full moon and in two weeks we'll have the Scorpio new moon. This is also a blue moon. It's the second full moon in the month of October. And so it has just a really kind of a loaded energy and loaded feel. We talk about, I wanna tell you a little bit about divine feminine astrology and how I use it. We talk about the elemental forces through the archetypes and how they are active in the human psyche and how they are also affecting the elemental world. And that's really Taurus. Taurus is the planet. It's the goddess. Taurus is how we use our desire and our sensual appetite. What we, Taurus is the mix of pleasure and beauty. Scorpio is about power and pleasure. So Scorpio gets a sense of pleasure from power. It's a very, very powerful sign. And so we're gonna look at these two archetypes and why they're so important right now. So I'm gonna read just a little bit today and then we'll go right into the planets. The Taurus full moon is opposite the sun in Scorpio and conjunct the planet Uranus. The moon in Taurus is exalted and it's very effective at bringing energies through onto the planet. So if you don't know this or you're not aware of this, the um, and there's never been a better time to understand astrology, by the way, because if you don't, for people who don't understand how relevant it is by now, it just is kind of a, a map of the software that we're running. It's a map of the lower realms and the planetary forces that are active. And it teaches us about the cycles and how we can best use them. Taurus is in a seven year cycle or Uranus is in a seven year cycle moving through the sign of Taurus. Now, what this means is that everything about the earth and our environment what we desire, how we create, how we ground is being completely rewritten. 
it's like the force of spirit, the goddess, the holy Shekinah has come in. It's like that lightning bolt has hit the planet and it's active. It's very active and it's affecting our psyche. It's affecting how we understand our power. And the reason is because Venus rules Taurus. Pluto rules Scorpio. So Pluto is about power and it's opposing Venus in Taurus at the full moon. Those are the rulers. The ruler of the full moon is Venus and we have Pluto rules Scorpio. So this is about understanding everything to do with how we create, how we use our personal power. The world right now is so busy and so chaotic and gives us the illusion that everything is falling apart. There's so much pain, there's so much suffering, there's so much information. Technology has changed the game. Technology alone has taken us into a completely new reality. And so how we use the elemental forces and how we create, it's a different, it's a different life now. We're not, I, I, I wanted to talk about the goddess being the organic ability. Taurus is the archetype of the Arafant. And that means it's the archetype of listening, of listening. And so it shows that our ability to listen and hear and receive is our ultimate creative power. And so in order to have that be a reality that is effective for us, we have to, we have, to have the stillness. We have to be able to access the Arafund is also intuition. It's the inner teacher. And so it's the inner teacher that, um, that calls forth our reality. It's our reality. What we hear is what we see. What those little voices inside, whether they're angelic or demonic, are telling me, that's what I'm, how I'm projecting, and that's how the elements are dancing. This is Taurus. So Taurus, the moon is exalted because that means the moon is very powerful in Taurus. Because the moon is a mother energy. It's a birthing energy like Venus, and it brings... Um, the force is into form. It's that feminine that brings the force into form. And so what's happening when this full moon is conjunct Uranus, it's revolutionary and it's revelation. It's, it's, it's a revelation as well. And it's a disruption, but it's also a culmination. It's shining light on how we've used these forces and it's opposite the sun in Scorpio. And sun in Scorpio is about is shining light on it and also being, you know, uh, opposed by the moon. And so th this axis is, is, is very much um, in play. It's in play, it's online at the time of the full moon. All right, so Taurus is an earth sign. And so the moon, it, the moon brings it to earth when the full moon is in Taurus. Um, and ruled by Venus, Taurus, is the earth we said that it's our planet it's sophia the planet it's gaia it's gaia the planet and um uranus transiting taurus over the next seven cy year cycle is going to completely transform the world we've already just mentioned that and we are going to see a huge amount of activity also in in the and the weather and in as we've been seeing um, fires and and earthquakes and just it's going to shake the earth I and mean, it's it's already happening it's like that lightning bolt touching the earth. Venus rules our desire and so Venus is going to be in Libra, where she's um, very much she's the ruler of Libra at the time of the full moon on October thirty first Venus will be in Libra at four degrees. And Venus is very powerful in Libra. That's where I see Venus, the goddess, as her full truth, justice, beauty, and symmetry, harmony and balance and creative power. So Venus is, is um, she's in her power at this time. The moon is in her sign. This full disruptive moon is in the sign of Taurus, one of her, the signs she rules. But she's sitting pretty in, in Libra.
meaning she's holding the goddess Ma'at. She's holding that projection of truth and justice onto the planet. All right. We just talked about her and her fullest expression of power, justice, beauty, and truth, justice, very important. In Taurus, Venus teaches us about sensuality. She teaches us how to appreciate beauty as pleasure. So when we think about, um, when we think about food, when we think about sexuality, when we think about the earth and the beauty that we um, receive from the earth, when we think about the, the, the beauty in our homes and in our environment, whatever the be beautiful things, beautiful clothing, beautiful form, there's a, um, Taurus teaches us how to appreciate that. And, um, but it all, it's also unrained, it's unlimited, meaning when we go into, and five, the number of the elephant represents the fall of spirit into matter and the forgetting, the, the hypnotic trance that we fall into when we taste the divine gifts of Venus. You think of um, Marie Antoinette, or you think of something like that, very decadent and, you know, this, the, the pleasures of life and how we can fall into the trap of just wanting to consume and consume until we bury ourselves in this world. And there's something very important I'm going to talk about in just a minute. I'm reading a super book about um, Rome and the, um, the classical period. It's so powerful and it fits this cycle so well. So we have to learn how to balance that. We have to learn how to love beauty and love sensuality and love being on this earth, but how to not fall into addiction or not fall into greed or not fall into a haze that dims our light and makes us forget who we are and what we really um, stand for inside our heart and on this journey. This is, these are huge lessons right now because um, what I'm seeing in humanity, especially with technology, is that technology has dimmed our light. On some levels we're waking up, but the waking up is also on some levels, it's a move away from truth. It's very interesting that we think we're going into truth and knowing more stuff up here, but our physicality and our appreciation and our presence and our ability to really hear and to relate to each other, because that after all is the greatest gift of this reality is that is that we broke up into many, many pieces and now we want to know each other and we want to experience the goddess through our relationships and by sharing the beautiful earth together. And so there's lessons here. The lessons are about learning, understanding power and beauty. All right. In this realm of reality, okay, beauty is pleasure. Okay, the sensual pleasure can become our very bondage. That's why it's the fall. When we are over sensualized and, and we are just in gluttony, when we hit it up to here, we've hit the bottom. We're ready to start to wake up. And humanity on one level, I believe is still going deeper into this. I, I see that, that um, visually humanity is going through um, a period of getting, um, of, of remembering what, what, um, what beauty really is, what it's meant for without attachment. When you look at social media and you look at sort of like the compulsive, addictive, um, just over focus on beauty, it gets to the so exaggerated that it it inverts, it goes into another energy. And so that is where we are. When I was thinking about it, I live in a in, on a river town and um, there's two river towns. There's one in New Hope and one in Lamberville, New Jersey. And they're both, um, they're both, they, they connect through a bridge and a lot of people come on the weekends. People come from New York, people come from Philadelphia, people come from, um, from all over. And just, it's, it's, it attracts tourists on the weekends. And I was thinking about over the years since I moved here from New York City, how I moved here because of the beauty of this area. It's just absolutely, um, it's absolutely a powerful 
um, natural setting on this planet. And it's so beautiful. I love it. But I, I, and I walk through the town all the time and I've noticed that people, when I look at human beings walking in groups and walking in packs or walking alone or walking with their family, the energy around um, is, is, feels more chaotic and more um, busy and more like sort of that natural beauty of, of a human being that's kind of in touch with the earth and in their organic heart. It's getting um, the visual of human beings is really changing. There's a heavy energy. There's a heavy energy and it feels bound in the head. It's like there's a cage around the head and it's like the heart is traumatized almost. The heart is traumatized and there's kind of a shutdown, which is interesting because on one level, especially in the summers, people are exposing more in a very different kind of way. There's more sexuality in a different way. It's a different frequency. But I, I've noticed that humanity is, is going deeper and deeper into this realm. So we're going to look at the, 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 the um, aspects at the full moon and talk about what they're doing. So there's a saying, or I, there's, not, I, there's a saying, I just wrote this right here. We get what we desire. And yet we don't get what we desire. So the opposite is always true. We also don't get what we desire. We become what we love. We become what we love. We become what we love. We look like what we contemplate and what we spend time with. We begin to take on, we talked about the law of reflectivity um, last video but we start to look like what we contemplate. And so there's a saying, you know, place your focus on, on what you want to be. That's why working with people that we respect and we love that are maybe a little bit further along than we are in the direction we would like to go can be powerful because we're looking to that and um, we're receiving it. We're trans, we're receiving the transmission and, and look at art. I know when, when I look at visionary art and um, I work with visionary artists, I see just those codes in the art activate are very, very powerful. So um, our, th we, we, our thoughts and feelings are frozen as the earth. Our thoughts and feelings are the frozen, they become frozen and become a reality. The alchemical element, salt. Scorpio opposite to Taurus teaches us the appreciation, appreciation of power and deep truth being exposed. Scorpio knows the pressure and the pleasure of the inner sensual reality, the complete loss of control in sexuality or the loss of the personal self, the letting go of the personal self and the merging with another. We have to have power to experience this without being consumed or exploited. So if, we're, can, if we lose ourselves in something like that and we don't have the grounding of Taurus, so now we're looking at the archetypal juxtaposition, Taurus grounds us. We, we want to know who we are so that we can go on that journey. If we go on that journey before we know who we are, we're much more susceptible to getting lost in You can find deep, deep addiction in Scorpio too, and depression and self harm and self, um, you know, just not feeling very um, tortured as if you bit yourself like the scorpion. Um, Scorpio will teach us power and self love when it's understood properly. It will teach us how to rise from the inferno and ash and flame as the phoenix reborn into the, to a new image of self. So basically it's Pluto, it's, it's death, it's the underworld. So we're gonna talk about these underworld forces now. I'm just gonna go straight into the, um, and Scorpio is the archetype death and, uh, oh, and it's also connected with Uranus, Uranus, because Scorpio is 13 and one plus three is four and four is the number of Uranus. And so Uranus conjunct 
oh, this is huge, is conjunct the full moon is bringing about a death and a rebirth. It's going to bring about a lot of energy. So we'll have to be exciting to check in next week and see how this goes. So we have the sun in Scorpio, eight degrees. Eight is the number of Saturn and it's the number of karma. The moon in Taurus at eight degrees conjunct Uranus in eight degrees in, in, in some minutes, but they're, they're almost exact. It's very, very powerful on aspect. We have Mercury um, will be stationing direct a few days after the full moon, but it will still be retrograde at 26 degrees. So I wanna point this out. 26, two plus six is eight. Again, Saturn energy. There's so much Saturn energy written all over this. 26 degrees Libra is Mercury retrograde. Square to Saturn at 26 degrees Capricorn, another two, six, eight. Eight is the number of Saturn. Saturn will be direct. And so Saturn is more powerful in this. And we have in Capricorn, uh, Jupiter at 20, Pluto at 22, and, and Saturn at 26, all really square to Mercury, but a direct hit with Saturn. So the forces of, this is what I want to say, the forces of Capricorn are, are on. They're all, everything's direct. Everything had been retrograde. These planets are co all conjunct. They're direct. We've got Pluto, Jupiter expanding it, Saturn, and um, in the sign Capricorn. So all the, um, this is power to the institutions and power to the ruling forces on the planet at this time. And they will be squaring the mind communication, our ability to receive information will be deeply, deeply challenged. Now, this comes up around the time, obviously, of the election. The um, In the US, the full moon is on October 31st, and the election is on November 3rd. And the day of the, the election, Mercury will be stationing direct. So that's another kind of grindy, um, you know, jolting energy to the mind on the day of the election. So Mars will be retrograde still in Aries. And Mars is kind of, in this sense, I'm seeing Mars as our personal power because Aries is I am. And with Mars retrograde in its own sign in Aries, it's, um, it's, it would be challenged, challenged. The ability to stand up for oneself is a little bit challenged with um, Mars retrograde. All right, so I'm just going to wrap this up and talk about what this means. This, I put, I put Earth as a learning school. We're here to learn right now. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. Oh, this is huge, okay. This is big, okay. I wanna talk about this book that I'm reading, it's called The Darkening Age. This was a, a powerful thing I want to bring in. It's kind of uh, a part two of the video we started last time where I talked about the right and left are on an archetypal um, way looking at the tree of life. So this is called The Darkening Age, The Christian Destruction of the Classical World, kind of a triggering title um, by Catherine Nixley, Nixie. I, I don't know if I pronounced her name right, and this is the first book I've ever read by her, The Darkening Age, The Christian Destruction of the Classical World. So this is really interesting. I just started it. So I'm just gonna bring in some of the ideas because it's so applicable to what's happening. So we're looking at these two forces that we talked about in the last video, the more patriarchal force, the more feminine force. Now they need each other. And we talked about that very seriously. On their own, they both degenerate and become the inversion of their power. What I see right now is that, so this talks about a time when the classical era had been thriving and there was, you know, it was more of a kind of a goddess culture, a multi-deity culture where there was all the different gods, the Roman gods, and there was paganism. And it also, the philosophers began to thrive out of this um, time and produce science began to really come into its own and they were doing experiments and all kinds of crazy things on living animals and beings. And um, it was really, um, it, 
the way I'm feeling it right now, that world had started to sink. And there's more we can say about that. And I'll talk about that in another video, but the polarity on that side was starting to dim. And so when the first Roman emperor became Christian and wanted to become an authority, you know, have more of an authoritarian say over, over um, what people were allowed to, how they were allowed to worship, what books they were allowed to read. We saw a clash and I'm just getting in starting this book. So I can't wait to read the details, but we saw where one side had began to take it to an extreme and another side of force came in and began to pull it. So this is what happens with polarity. And we were talking about it with the red and the blue on the tree of life. We talked about the force of Mars and the force of Jupiter and compared it in politics to the right and the left. And then someone pointed out to me that in um, in England, it's the exact opposite. The colors are, are reversed and this is really important because the truth is that one side can become the other side. We, we, we actually all contain within us both polarities, but we, we initially are one and then we flip to the other. And so it's so interesting because right now what's happening is that on this planet, there's been an explosion in the past 20 years or even 40 years of the ability to, I mean, think about even just um, with products and with trade, how the, the price of material goods went way, 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 way down. And there's an abundance of, of materials offered at a low price due to other countries producing mass amounts of goods and exporting them. So what happened is, everybody gained access and we became more materialistic with social media. This is an abundance of people having a platform and all of a sudden our inner um, fixation on beauty, on lust, on sexuality, on, you know, fame, fame is a big one, became so heightened that it used to be a smaller percentage of people jumped into that arena, but now there's a was a huge wave where everyone's jumping in. Everyone can broadcast. Everyone can communicate. Everyone can post pictures. It there no the barrier for entry is was removed because almost all over the world now you can create a platform where there used to be more of a barrier for entry. You had to work harder to get that. That's a long story to get into that, but you had to work for it. You had to work, work, work. You maybe had to get some certain kind of education or you had to move up in the world or overcome some obstacles. And you, you didn't just get access to the world. I mean, even world leaders only, it was only so long ago that had that, but now we all have that. So with that has come, there's really, I see this right now as a collision and a, and a, and a um, uh, um, battle between the patriarchal forces because I don't necessarily see even what I'm talking about as being, it is, it is, there is a feminine side to it. There is a feminine side to what we see in the world right now. And now a more conservative approach is pulling back again. And the message here is that we want to access our intuition and we want to think for ourselves. And we want to, we want to understand that each one of us is truly a um our own technology of creative force and the cycles that we see just go I talk about this a lot and I'm good I'm, and actually I work with it when I do personal work I want to mention that at the end it's going around the wheel the zodiac is the wheel and it's the software for this world and so what we see that's why we can read it. We don't always know exactly how it will look, but we can read the forces for sure because we can see them. And we play a part as humanity, as the projection and how it plays out, but the cycle is going. And looking at this, you know, I've been picking up on this more and more, and I, I know it through just the work I do and what I brought in through work, but reading about this period where, you know, they're calling the Christian destruction of the classical world. First of all, I, I almost had flashbacks to that time. That is, could not be more of a representation of what's happening now. And 
not exactly, but the forces. You, they're living. I can feel, even reading about this, I can feel, I can read the archetypal energies of what happened and I can't wait to go deeper into this. I've known about it through other resources, but this is a new way of looking at it. And um, at any given time, we're meant to, we talked about this in the last video, create our own sphere and our own life. It doesn't mean to be tuned out because right now when it gets to the end, it's very, very, there's a, there's a lot at stake. This isn't a time where you just like go off into the woods and live and forget about the world. I mean, you can, we can live that way, but the world, if you don't go to the world, the world will find you. It's that time on the planet where the forces are active enough to find us. They're going to affect all of us, but through intuition, through listening, through, um, through, good communication, we can make it through this reckoning period and become stronger and more creative. And there is, I've mentioned this before, but I have a huge body of work that I know is coming in at a later time, meaning it's being prepared for a later time because things are changing so much. Right now, people, a lot of people aren't even re able to receive some of the teachings for the new time because everything is changing. So, let me just see if there's anything else I want to say. Um, we're going to, this will be really powerful. We're going to do the goddess report next week for the month of November. I'm doing the monthly goddess report and then we'll do the, the Scorpio new moon. So this whole period between right now through the election and on the energies of the full moon are active for really powerfully for two weeks. Let me see if I'm, I, I think I've, I covered everything. It's just that Uranus energy is bam, it's disruptive and it's right at this moon. The moon is our feminine. It's our consciousness. It's our, our feelings and our sensitivity. It's our homes. It's the mother energy. It's really a feminine energy, but it's bringing things to culmination, really bringing things to culmination. And I'm, I'm not sure how things are going to play out. We might just take a moment and see if anything comes in. Well, the forces are fighting really hard and a lot, obviously, right now, a lot is coming to the surface. Much, 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 you know, in, in even in reading this book right now too, of what we think is real or truth is not, this is what I wanted to say. With Taurus teaches us that um, beauty, on the outside is not always beauty on the inside. We all have to learn that at one time or another. That's social media. Even, you know, Venus is the throat. So even sounding beautiful and speaking wonderful words and looking beautiful in, and having an attractive energy that brings things to us doesn't necessarily mean that we're clean on the inside. Now we're human beings. So this isn't about being perfect, but the moon is also about purification. We have to learn to discern energy. And that's part of our lesson on planet earth so that we know how to create. And this is big right now because, because of all the addiction and the drop into this fame, fame, fame vibration and, um, at all costs and the sacrificing human relationships and organic presence with other human beings to be constantly online in our minds, constantly thinking about online, 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 online. I communicate with people online rather than to just be sitting with people, no phones, no computer, and just, um, you know, eating or taking a walk or being, well, I think of children because children are really affected by this, their parents, are more logged on than ever before. And so the parent-child relationship is at stake as well. Children are attached to their devices and it's we're gonna be dealing with that at a certain time. You know, I heard, um, I heard Elon Musk talking about, you know, whether or not we will retain our bodies or if we'll decide to just go into the AI world. And uh, it was quite a conversation because we've already gone into it. He was making the point that we're already cyborgs, meaning with our phones and our technology, but this is a time to 
value the goddess. And so that being said, make sure to find me, Art of the Feminine Instagram, because that's where we're going to do some, some more, uh, a more of a divine feminine energy update with a, a meditation activation. And so yeah, it's exciting times. Um, I'm excited to come back and do a live stream and take questions. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I have something big coming around mid-November. I'm doing a, a really um, special three-month program starting in the new year. But, oh, I know what I wanted to say. Oh, this is big. So I, so Divine Feminine Astrology, we work with the, I, I have, it's a very special synthesis of wisdom and it's, and it's, it's merging the wisdom of this software with it. It's, 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 it's attaching it back to a higher software. And so I work with the galactic core and the galactic core codes. And so right now I have not done any one-on-one -on -one sessions since back around, I think it was around March, maybe March, maybe I did a couple in April, but I'm going to open that back up. If you would like to do a galactic core code session and really look at your, the nucleus of power that you have and look at the Zodiac, when I work with astrology, we're looking at what the challenges are in this lifetime and putting them together and attaching them taking the inversion and bringing it back up and, and activating that marriage between spirit and matter. So I'm going to post that on my website and I'll come back and leave a link to it. That being said, I wish everyone a beautiful full moon in Taurus. And I love, I'm a Taurus and it's a, it's such a magical time of year because it is our planet. And, um, I think we'll say I am, but I, I ask you to think, because this Uranus energy could bring about unrest in a very, very big way. We hope not. It doesn't mean it has to be that way, but I ask you to look at your passions and your desire force from Taurus and your power in Scorpio and decide, listen, listen, receive, go beyond the cycle and see where your real truth is right now. Because if you can make it past the, um, the illusions and the persuasion into something that might not be of the highest, you're gonna have a lot of energy at your disposal for creating something new. And so that being said, um, we'll do I am in the seven directions and then I'll close out for today. So very, very important, just seeing our, our magnetic field strong and bright, anchoring light onto the planet through the power of I am, although Mars is retrograde in Aries, we'll activate our I am right now in our field the spring is about the merkaba the star of david just energetically in consciousness merging the above and the below and activating the heart saying i am before me i am behind me I am at my left. I am at my right. I am above me. I am below me. I am into me. Take a deep breath in all the way in. Hold it. Make an intention. What would you like to anchor onto the planet with this very, very powerful manifesting energy, manifesting from the higher consciousness and now exhaling it all out? I am. I am. I know I am. I am, I am, I know, I am.
sending you all huge love right now. By the way, we're clearing out even the underworld when we say I am below me, staking the power of the Christic force, that light, that logos power and clear. It's, it's affirming that you are the creative force of your life and it's raising your frequency into the place where you're creating from the higher consciousness. And that is what our planet is trying to activate right now and move into right now. So that being said, I will see you next time.